Hi, welcome to another episode of Hitting Hard. Christina Irwin returning with Michael Lackney. Michael Lackney. And, you know, there is a lot of things going on that we're going to discuss tonight. Some things local, some things um, abroad. But before we get into that, and hit our topics, I wanted to, again, mention the Pirates of the Rusty Cutlass. Um, They are uh, Pirates for Hire. They do community events. And you can contact them and have them at your event at a Pirates Life 4.us. And there's another thing I wanted to mention, too. You know, the the company's ever-changing, and we here at Hitting Hard wanted to mention that and kind of touch back on the topic I had briefly discussed last episode uh, of Jason Brill. He's actually going to be moving over to Dual Phoenix Live from now on. So great things happening for the company for him as well. I want to thank him for that. And again, thank you for coming back. And it's good to see you again. Mike, what is going on with with everything around the world? It just seems like somebody opened up a package of crazy. <laughs> well, it seems, unfortunately, in modern day society that it just keeps getting worse and worse, too. Um, for instance, one of our wonderful, wonderful big minds in America, uh, Ben Carson, decided that it was a great idea to tell everybody that you are poor because you think you're poor. Now, I do want to, to bear in mind, if anybody who does not know who this person is, Ben Carson is actually the HUD secretary. So that gives you an idea of what level of government he's on um, and, and where he's coming from. Now, you know, and I was pulling up this article. I was reading it. Mm-hmm. And... The headline from CNN, and I quote, this is actually just as of this morning. The headline reads on CNN, HUD Secretary Ben Carson. Poverty is largely a state of mind. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think it's a state of mind. I'm sorry, folks, but if you're stupid enough to believe that you will get rich just by thinking that you're rich, you're a moron. You get rich by working your ass off and moving on. If things don't work the way that you want them to work, you work at it so that they do. You change stuff so that they do. You're not a winner because you think you're a winner. I'm sorry, but Trump, and I know that I have strong feelings about him, but this is a legitimate fact. He thinks he's a winner every day. And how many times has he filed bankruptcy? Yeah. Just a thought. You know, and he's saying that um, he's thinking the wrong mindset uh, contributes to poverty. Well, there are certain things that we have to think about when something like that is said. One, okay, is for one, are they trying to live within their means? Okay, obviously, if you're making minimum wage and you're trying to live like you make $80,000 a year, it's probably not going to happen. Okay, people, you got to live within your means. Two... You know, there's things wrong with people out there, sometimes mentally, sometimes physically. So telling somebody that it's a mindset that you're in poverty doesn't mean that. That's not an excuse. That's not something to say, oh, well, you know, you broke your leg, so, but you still need to get out there and work. Okay, but what if you're supposed to be on your feet all day? It's not going to happen. No. And correct me if I'm wrong in thinking this, but... When we're in kindergarten, we're taught we can be anything that we want to be if we just keep our mind at it. Right. Okay, so tell me, how is us thinking like children going to help us as adults? Well, for one, it's not. For one, we are adults, and we need to think like adults. You know, when you get in college, that is for when you graduate, you want to go in whatever area you're studying for and go into your workforce. Okay, I'm sorry. Somebody had so President had Trump had won, and you know what? I don't, you know, I don't have any ill feelings towards a person towards him personally. But my feelings are this: 
How in the world are you going to have a day off of school because he elected president? You know what? Grow up. Get over it. You're an adult. These things happen. You don't always get your way. And in as far, and I know I'm kind of going off topic here, but it kind of goes back to this where not everybody is able to live that luxury lifestyle. So it's so easy for people to say, oh, well, it's a mindset. Okay. But if you're already living within your means and you're already doing everything that you can, there's things beyond your control. How is it a mindset? Tell me. How? And I'm sorry, but if you are in the mindset that, oh, I'm a winner. Oh, I'm going to be rich. I am rich. Oh, I just have everything that I want. And you start spending all of your money and you start not saving anything, not saving a goddamn dime. Do you really think that you're going to go anywhere in life? Because no, you're not. The way that you succeed is by working, saving, and succeeding physically, mentally, and emotionally. There is no way that you can just do one of those and it just work out magically. You need to have the right mindset, you need to have the right stability, and you need to have the right amount of responsibility to go anywhere in life. And you're not going to be handed a silver spoon. Let's face it. Yes, this is America. Yes, we can do whatever legally <laughs> that we want. But it, you cannot say, well, I'm going to, and you know what? I am I may make people mad at this, but I don't really care because here's the fact. There's, you are, every worker out there is paying money into the system. Every worker. That's a fact. Another fact is you have people that are abusing the system. Then the the system is is completely wrecked. They I mean they're giving assistance to people who don't need it for one. And they're not giving it to people who are struggling, who are trying to make it, who can't. So what makes more sense here? Do you want to give people to who are trying to help? themselves and trying to get better or do you want to help people that are going to go to their local store have four hundred dollars of food stamps and then they're going to then they're going to open their wallet and you see wads of cash no i'm not talking ones you know i'm not talking like well they just finished doing hair for a day and they've been on their feet no i'm talking 20s 50s that type of thing and here here's a spoiler for viewers that aren't savvy to you know food stamps and stuff but 90 percent of the time they sell whatever they don't use for real mm. cash. Which brings me to the point of this, and this really made me upset. I seen this post the other day on Facebook. Um, someone had actually posted a picture, and I and I don't know if it was had generated from Craigslist or where it was at, and maybe someone out there who's listening, they'll remember this post and they'll they'll be able to chime in and let us know. But someone was selling their food stamps from Ohio on Facebook. Now, that is illegal. So, you know, if anybody questions, well, that's kind of funny. Well, maybe they just needed some cash. They can't do that. That's illegal. They can't. Um, and they literally put up a copy. They shown a card. They blocked out their name and the digits on it. And it, you could literally see it was said Ohio. So, you know, you've got people abusing the system that obviously are in no need of being in poverty, but they're abusing it which only create makes it harder for the people who actually need it and can't get it. Oh, and for those of you wondering, well, why would anybody buy food stamps? It's a very, very simple fact. The people that want the money for things such as drugs, alcohol, or fancy TVs, etc., whatever they want to use it for, they will sell their food stamps, say $70 worth of food stamps for about $40 to $50. It makes profit for them because they get actual cash and the other people are like, yeah, why the hell wouldn't I do that? Because I just turned $40 into 70 in food, but still that's 70 bucks. And how many of you don't spend at least close to that every week on groceries? Because let's face it, the price of groceries aren't going down and they're not going to anytime soon either. Mm -mm. No, I'm just, I'm a shock at, at what, how, you know, he's coming out from saying this. Um, and, and this is exactly what his quote is. So you all know exactly what he's saying and exactly why I am upset at how somebody can come out and say this. 
and he's saying, you take somebody that has the right mindset, you can take everything from them and put them on the street, and I guarantee in a little while they'll be right back up there. Not always the case. Not always the case. All right. I think I would love to spend the rest of the show talking about this, but I think we should move on to our next topic, yeah. which will be the bombing in England. Oh, yes. Would you like to go ahead and give some info about that? <sighs> yeah, I, here's the thing. As far as the bombing in England is concerned, and I did pull this up, uh, and it, again, this is CNN article that I'm pulling this from, so everybody knows this is a legit source um, there you see the policeman there from Manchester. They're actually in in England. They're in a race to find the. Then the headline reads: They're actually British police in race to find Manchester terror network. They are actually going in, tracing his steps from prior to the attacks, finding out where he's been, and then locate. They're in the process of locating those cells. And yes, it is ISIS. It is. So, you know, the things that we thought were fairly safe, that people were not, uh, you wouldn't think that there would be any problems with, you know, you know, you know, transportation is one of them, but you wouldn't think a concert. Yeah. And just in case we didn't mention it before, this was at a kid's concert. I mean, not like little, little kids, yeah. but it was at a, a teeny bopper concert. Ariana Grande. Yeah. So it's not like they were going after a bunch of adults or violent people. They were going after little kids. I mean, teens. People that are, are, are just not adult enough to be dealing with that kind of shit. I mean, think about if you were in a public area and a whole group of people in front of you blew up, their blood splattered against you because... Mind you, that's what happens. It doesn't just magically disappear. That shit gets all over you. That would scar you for life. Now think about what that would do to a kid. Yeah. And here what they're saying is, is that that boy, he actually went from Manchester down to Libya. To get the bomb parts? Um, I'm not for certain if he went to Libya to get the bomb parts. They're not really going into discussion as far as where he got those parts from. Uh, but, and then he went to Dusseldorf, Germany, and then back to Manchester. They're saying that he actually had had a flat in England and went from that flat, or as if people, if they were not for certain what exactly, they're like, what are you talking about, a flat, an apartment? Um, so he went from his apartment to the concert, straight. So he, in, in essence, had... What they're thinking is actually had built that bomb at his apartment. And, you know, I'm, this makes me worried because as you, if you think about this happen in England, it can happen here. Yeah. And here's the thing, folks. A lot of you say, well, our government is watching out for us. They're, they're seeing what we do. Big Brother is watching and all that shit. Mind you, they do blacklist you when you buy certain things online. When you run your credit card for certain items, they do blacklist you. That means that they watch you. They, they watch what else you're buying to make sure that you're not buying things like bomb parts and assembling things to kill everybody. But how many suicide bombers were in America? It still happens. So it's not like... Just because the government's watching, it's not like just because the government flags you that it just magically doesn't happen. So it's not just a British thing. It's all around the world that we have to worry about this. Yeah, and it's it's ridiculous that, you know, we shouldn't have to worry about that. We really shouldn't. And that's the fact. I mean, it's a concert. It's a place for people to go have fun and enjoy themselves, you know. And and yes, Andrea, we I... I Read your comment, yes. We do realize she is a huge pop star, not just for kids. But a lot of kids do go to those concerts. Um, I mean, you know, keep in mind, when you were a kid, you know, you wanted to go to uh, all your favorite pop stars. And, I, and I'm not sure, I don't know really how old you are, so forgive me. You know, in my day, day when I was growing up, it was New Kids on the Block. Things like that. So, you know, and it was kids, it was adults, it was a group of people. Um... 
But that's something that... A concert? That's somebody's entertainment. That's that's their relaxation. That's their enjoyment. And you're going to, in essence, take that away from them by doing something like that. And it makes you wonder, can I go to a concert? Am I going to go to be able to go to a concert and possibly be killed because of this? And just for the people that did comment, um, I just pulled this up from The Telegraph, which is, I believe, a different country's version of a newspaper. Um, 22 people at that concert died, and it says, and I quote, including an eight-year-old. So that means that, yes, children go to these concerts too. I understand not all. That's not all that's there is children, but children do go to these. An eight-year-old got blown up. So I'm sorry, but right now is not the time to be arguing about how little the kids are that go to these concerts. The fact of the matter is 22 people died. And that's, that's basically what it amounts to. I mean, our government, they can do so much. They, let's face it. Yes, big brother, but they can only do so much. That's a fact. You know, they're not always going to be behind us. They're not always going to be going, oh, what is that person doing? We better make sure they're not going to build a bomb. Not everybody knows that, which is why we all have to be on the lookout for something. Let's face it, you know. Would we know what to do in that case and everybody would? No, not everybody would. But if something is wrong, you can certainly pick up a telephone and say, something doesn't look right here. I may want to at least call the non-emergency line police and go, something's not right. And I, and I don't want to cause a disturbance, but I also don't want it not to be unknown. So... That can definitely save lives, and we have to be on the lookout for something like that. That's the world we live in today. We no longer live in a world where we can send our kids outside and tell them to go play. I just think it's despicable. And I don't... This is nothing against the person that commented, don't get me wrong, but... If you really think that this matter is so trivial that you're going to argue about the age of the people there, then you don't understand the impact of this, okay? The impact of this whole event is the fact that even in today's age, okay, where this is not a new thing, this has happened many times before, we still are no closer to stopping this before it begins. Because not everybody has their eyes open. Not everybody is sitting there and going, you know, whether it be, if you're at a store where you sell products like this, it could be a, a, a Walmart, it can be a Target, it could be your mom and pop store down the road. Keep your eyes open. If you notice that somebody's buying things that may not look quite right, the normal person goes into a store and doesn't normally buy all at once, then maybe... You have to take into effect that, well, maybe I should talk to my manager. Or if there's a policeman on duty and maybe he walked in the back. There's nothing wrong with saying, this doesn't look right. And I want your opinion. There's nothing wrong with that. But that's what we have to do today. We all have to be grown-ups now and we have to deal with these things. Again, I would love to keep talking about this, but I think we should go ahead and move on to our third topic of the day, which yeah. would be a local news event, and I'll go ahead and let you explain what happened. <sighs> well, I, you know, there just like I said, there's things that are going on locally. Um and that I did want to discuss. And, uh, you know, if you guys, you know, I, I do want to hear your thoughts. I do. And the reason why I'm, I'm talking as fast as I am is because this bothers me. And it should bother you too. And because that is the world that we live in. Speaking of which, I did want to mention... Um, something that had happened locally in Canton. And yes, I am going to bring it up. 
because it does need to be discussed. This is something that's going on and that we all need to be another thing that we need to be aware of. And that is a man was just uh, shot and killed in Canton not too long ago by the Canton police. Um, apparently, the story is, and I'm reading this from the Canton Repository, in case anybody wants to know, um, that apparently he had dialed 911 and told people that he had asthma. Now, asthma? That cotton was criminally charged. Yeah. Um, I just, you know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, from, and correct me again, if I'm wrong, please correct me because I do not want to quote this incorrectly. Um, he apparently was holding his girlfriend hostage and somehow the, it gets into, you know, a scuffle and next thing you know, he's killed. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to actually look up the article so I can quote it correctly. So I do apologize for that, um, but I, Joe, I... It's saying here, I... and th this is from Fox, so... But it said when the police arrived that the man was holding his girlfriend by the neck and the body when they arrived at the scene. Now, if... He's saying that it was because they had asthma. I'm sorry, but I've had asthma. I have asthma, rather. And if you're holding somebody with asthma by the neck, you're not doing it right. And I'm sorry, but any any form of police officer or medical professional or anybody with half a brain should know that asthma is a bronchial disease, which basically means that your bronchial tubes, uh, tubes flare up and it makes it hard for you to breathe, okay? Sometimes impossible, depending on how bad the attack is. If somebody is holding you by the neck while you're having an asthma attack, common sense dictates that they're not helping you. I mean, come on, folks. Really? Yeah. I mean, he, again, this, I was able to bring this up, so now I'm able to quote this correctly, that uh, they had, they did have a call. They found a man complaining he had asthma, claiming to have a gun and holding a woman face down by a large bush next to his father's front porch. Now, when you have, now, I don't have asthma, but I can tell you that why would... Having a gun on you and holding her down, I, 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 to those, to me, those are like two separate things. Those just doesn't happen. To me, it sounds like he was literally, you know, mentally not there. Yeah, D don't worry, it's asthma. What? And then the male, and then the male officer orders him to let go of her right now. There's gasping, and then the officer repeats, let go of her. Didn't let go of her. Okay. Now, anybody knows if the cops tell you to do something, and you're obviously in the wrong, it's not something where you're going, well, they're telling me to do something wrong, I shouldn't do that. No, we're not talking about that. We're not talking about all these other things that are going around out there. Well, this cop made me do this. And that's like, no, 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 no. <coughs> this man would not let go of her. That's the issue. He didn't listen. He got shot. And I'm sorry, I... but with all of the reports of, again, I know this wasn't the case, <coughs> but with all of the reports of police abuse, there is no reason whatsoever that you should not be listening to the police, okay? 
there have been multiple reports all the way back from 2000, early, early 2000, of police tasing people or shooting people for simply not getting out of their car. But you're on top of a woman with your hand around her neck and your other hand on her body somewhere, holding her down, and they're telling you to get off of her and you're not listening? Even if you are applying medical help, let them take over. They probably know more than you to begin with. And apparently he said he had a gun. Now, whether he, they showed it or not, that we don't know. Right. But he actually, it says on here, and I quote, at one point, he also says he had a pistol in the garage before adding, the gun is actually on me. I don't do well around cops, for real. Okay. It also mentions in here that says he had a pistol, and he's told the officers this several times, that he had a pistol and didn't care what happened. If you don't care what happens and you're telling an officer that you have a gun when you don't have a gun on you and you're not listening to what the cops are telling you what to do. Yeah, he was unarmed. I get that. But you're physically telling a policeman that you have a gun. He doesn't have time to stop and go, well, hold on a minute. Let me go ahead and frisk you and make sure that you don't have a gun. Because, you know, I have to take my life into effect. So I, and they, keep in mind, they risk their lives every day. Every day. Now, am I saying that what happened could have been avoided? I don't know. I wasn't there. Who can say that they could have? Who was there that can? Wasn't me. But I can tell you this. If you are being told that... You have a gun on you. You're going to believe them. Yeah. I'm sorry, but if I was a police officer and somebody says, I have a gun, I have a gun, I have a gun, and They're you're on top them. of a woman and insulting them, I'm not going to say, well, turn around and do the hokey pokey so that I can make sure that you don't have a gun because I don't believe you and uh, we'll just call it quits. No. I'm sorry. If you say you have a gun, you're assaulting a woman already and you start reaching for anything... I'm immediately going to assume that you have a gun, especially after you say, oh, I, have a gun I don't on care me. what happens. I mean, really? Come on. Common sense, people. You know, I just, I, let's, you know, and with everything going around in the country with the policemen and everything, and, I, and I'm going to be wrapping this up for a moment. We had a lot to talk about tonight, um, but... Uh, you know, like I said, everything happened with the police that has happened. And now this. You have to understand one thing. And it all comes down to this. The policemen are not mind readers. They don't have uh, x-ray glasses on. They're not superheroes. They are our own superheroes as far as going out and risking their lives every day for us. Yes, that goes beyond words. But they cannot tell when, if someone is currently we're having a gun on them unless it's actually being shown on their person. And they're not going to know this. But if someone tells you that, you believe them. Why would you not? And I think that's all the time we have for the articles yeah, today. But I do, yes. do want to let um, everybody know about what we're doing with the company just one more time. Just a drive the point home absolutely again um we have jason brill who is tuning in jason we love you uh he is actually going to head up the dual phoenix live and we're going to continue doing hitting hard bringing the topics to you so i do want to thank everybody for tuning in and watching us tonight um, i'm happy that you were able to to chime in um, keep your opinions coming because we want to know what your opinions are of this. And Jason Bro, that's true. Superheroes don't always wear capes, and that was exactly my point on that. So thank you. Um, so you know, keep tuning in every week. We're gonna have new topics. Uh, again, Wild Bill, you've seen him earlier at four. Um, we're going to continue 
with our feeds and, and talking about the current topics. And that's about all we have for tonight. And the other thing, folks, if you have anything that you want us to talk about or you have any questions or comments for us, let us know. Leave a comment. Message us. Do whatever you got to do. We love hearing from you guys. So thank you very much for tuning in. Absolutely. And even if we're off air, continue the comments because we will get back to you. Okay. So again, thank you for watching. Have a good night.